Hi there, my name is Jordan Eaton, and I'm here today at Lowry Park in Deep Cove, BC. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm here at a park filming a video, but that's exactly what I'm here to tell you. Today, I will become a historian and tell you about the history and the past of the Old Dollar Mill. Now, I hope you'll join me on this journey back in time and hopefully learn a thing or two about my hometown. Let's go. It all started in the year 1916 when a man named Robert Dollar from Falkirk, Scotland bought 100 acres of land that was still mostly forest along the shores of the Broad Inlet where it meets with the Indian Arm which is right over there and they probably meet somewhere right behind me here. He founded the Canadian Robert Dollar Company and from there his dream to dominate the shipping industry began. The Dollarton Mill was up and running by 1917 with many willing, determined employees who moved from far and wide to work for Dollar. Now follow me, you'll want to listen to this part. This road? This road? This road! And pretty much all other roads in this area simply did not exist when the mill first opened, meaning almost all the workers commuted by boat every single day. Roads along with bridges, grocery stores, homes, restaurants, and pretty much anything else you would find in an ordinary town today were nowhere to be seen. So, by 1918, roads were logged, homes were developed, and soon enough, a town was born. And this town was called Dollarton. In a memoir, Robert Dollar himself said that it was a very happy and contented community. It sure sounded like it, and I think us deep covers today definitely try to keep that alive. Anyways, let's take a step back in time and put ourselves in the shoes of mill workers. Opportunities for socializing were very rare for employees and their families, but still very important. This is why the community hall slash church was developed. At Christmas time, a luxurious Christmas dinner was spread with everything but liquor, and the children of Dollarton would put on something like a Christmas concert for their parents. Christmas time and all the events that were part of it were thoroughly enjoyed by all citizens of the community. At the mill, Friday nights were the time for socializing. Socials, teas, birthday parties, and showers were a few fond memories. Dollarton even had its very own bowling team, the Dollarton Devs. Tennis courts, swimming docks, and a lending library were some of the other places where citizens spent their pastime. As you can see from the, only a couple examples, Dollarton created a very strong sense of community very quickly one that existed even after the mill closed, and that is still maintained today. My grandparents, mom, and two uncles moved here in 1987, so I interviewed my grandma to see what she had to say about Dollarton and Deep Cove at the time. The community when we first moved here in May of 1987 was um, a very natural, quieter community than it is today. Um, we loved it because of the access and the view of the ocean. So I guess our love of this area begin, begins with the ocean in front of us. And I think the sense of community, everybody, I, I'm not saying newer people that have moved in you know, later, I think everybody has a sense of, of community, but I think people who have lived here for a long, long time and maybe say their whole lives have this deep sense of pride i think of of this area and we have a strong sense of community we like want to know a lot of people we know a lot of people we want to care for everything right you know mm -hmm. we know people's grandkids now and you and know you want to like keep it like this yeah like you want to keep it like and it you know we're when we first moved here i was 32 and so we were the young people moving into the neighborhood and our neighbors across the street were elderly almost at that time, right? And yeah. so, you know, in that sense, it's sad that a lot of people that we've known have passed away and, mm -hmm. and other people have moved in and everything, but there's still a, a deep sense of community and I think that's, um, that's important. Mm -hmm. In 1922, you would still work a 10 hour day every single day and wages were very, very low, being only 22 and a half cents per hour by 1930. 
Many families said it seemed like there was never any money. So children, like Robert Pooley, who was the son of a mill worker, sold papers and magazines in Deep Cove, which back then was a very long trek by foot. But this difficult lifestyle did not slow down the citizens of Dollarton. The average amount of lumber cut in a day at the dollar mill was 150,000 board feet. In 1932, things took a turn for the worse, and the founder, owner, and spirit of Dollarton and its mill passed away leaving a vacuum in the world of international trade, which has not yet been filled, said a prominent shipping man in the North Vancouver Citizen article. His son soon became the owner of the Canadian Robert Dollar Company, but then they were hit again with more speed bumps. World War II posed a huge threat to not only Deep Cove's mill, but the whole shipping industry, changing the ways Dollarton operated. This was a change that was very hard to come back from, leading to the end of an era. The Old Dollar Mill closed its doors for good on December 23, 1942 at 5 p.m. This may have been the end of the mill, but it wasn't the end for Dollarton. Dollarton bounced back and by 1963, Sherwood Park Elementary was built to replace the school of the past, Rush Point Dollarton School. This was only the beginning, as well as the shopping center, which is where I am right now. Seymour Golf Course was built on the parkway and new homes were built all, all along streets like Fairway and the Dollarton Roche Point area was thriving again. These businesses and structures that have been here since the 40s gave students and families like mine an idea of what life may have been like before the mill closed. A real life example is this home on the corner of Beachview and Dollar. This was actually an office for the old Dollar Mill and is now considered a heritage home. I know it's hard to imagine that a mill this large could possibly have stood here along the shore and all the way up to Dollarton Shopping Centre, but I can promise you it did at one point in time. Even though a lot has changed since the year Dollarton was a booming town with a brand new mill and a developing city, what is left of it is almost a reflection of what was originally here and I think it's really important that we recognize that. Dollar Mill definitely changed Deep Co for the good. Our economy, infrastructure, location, and geography would not be the same without it. And we wouldn't have lovely parks like Lowry Park to teach our children about our history and where we came from. All right, well, it's time for me to go, and I hope you learned about the history of Deep Cove, Robert Dollar, and his mill. Jordan Eaton, signing off. Bye.